What? what? No, 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 no. Trump's not putting a tariff on Wall Street winners. No, he's putting a tariff on all Chinese investment newsletters. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic thing. Hey, everybody, Courtney Smith here with our weekly Wall Street winners. Pretty excited. Great trades here going on here. We're making good money. We like that. Let's take a look, though. But situation has changed. You know, the markets are always very, very dynamic. Um, here's the S&P 500. Uh, we did a, you know, we made a new rally high. Uh, didn't make a new all-time high, but we made a new rally high here. We're making higher highs, higher lows. Clear bull market here. Not a great bull market, but a solid bull market. Purple predictor, pretty bullish here. You can see it's leading the market higher, showing the smart money's coming in here pretty hard. Uh, but I think we're going to kind of go into a little bit of a retracement phase this week. Let's take a look here. Over here in the Dow, the Dow didn't even make new rally highs. This is where the weakness is. We've talked about this in the past. Um, really, the whole trade war concept is really hurting the Dow type stocks. And if we look in the purple box, we can see that uh, the selling pressure, the red line increased a little bit, the uh, buying pressure, the green line reduced a little bit. And so we're already starting to see a little bit of a retracement here on the um, on the Dow. But the NASDAQ went up and made a new all-time high, not just a rally high, not just a bull market high, but an all-time high on the back of a very, very strong purple predictor. But then all of a sudden, the purple predictor fell out of bed. Look at that thing. It's just collapsing here. So the NASDAQ has been the leader to the upside. It's only going sideways so far in spite of the purple predictor showing that smart money's taking profits on this rally. Also notice that our the high that we made in the rally is just a little bit higher than the high we made in June, which tells me that we're running out of gas on this market. So we need to be very, very careful. So basically, I'm kind of just looking for a dip here in the marketplace. Maybe the whole week will be kind of a generally down uh, week. Uh, seasonality, this is the IWM. Look at this, triple top up there. Actually, it's called an ascending triangle formation. Uh, this is actually a bullish formation, but since the other three indexes that we've been looking at are not so bullish, I kind of have to look at this and say, I assume it's going to follow the other three big indexes as well. But remember what we've been focusing on. We've been telling you that because of the uh, potential, uh, because of the trade war, domestic stocks don't get hurt as badly as uh, big cap S&P type stocks. A restaurant chain? Eh, come on, it doesn't really matter. Steel imports from China don't really affect the profitability of a um, of a uh, of a restaurant chain. Local minimum wage laws that has a big impact. So we're seeing you know things like kiosks are going into Seattle fast food restaurants to replace overpriced labor. You see what I'm saying? That is a big impact. Trade wars don't affect domestic companies very often. A few, but not very many. So we do look for the IWM to outperform most of the other indexes, and therefore our seasonality indicator may stay on a bull sign. Now, normally, sell in May and go away, but here we are three months later, two and a half months later, and we're still on a buy signal, which just shows that in a time when seasonally we should be dribbling along sideways or drifting lower, here we are, we're, we're moving to the upside, which is really, really bullish because when that seasonal negative pressure is released in October, this market's going to really explode in the fourth quarter. I'm really looking forward to the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, yield curve bounced up a little bit. I focused a lot on it last week, so I won't repeat what I said then. But we bounced a little bit, five basis points, not a big deal, but we didn't make a new low at least. Uh, now, asset allocation shows that money's coming out of the bond market and into the stock market, and that's how we got back up again. Remember that what I said was the purple predictor showed that smart money left the, well, left the NASDAQ, but you can see here bond money came in and uh, took, o took over for that. You know, so the smart money left, dumb money came in. Or no, let's put it this way. I shouldn't say dumb money. Bond trader money came in. Okay, and these are insights you don't get anyplace else. 
but the market doesn't really want to take a lot of risk. So even though they moved out of bonds into stocks, they stayed into the hunkered down sectors, the consumer staples, the utilities, the boring things where they kind of hide out. You know what I'm saying? Um, global shares, you know, I've been totally bored with this market. I mean, look at it. It's the same price it was in February. Just put me to sleep. Okay, wake me up when it finally does something. But a couple of weeks ago, I did get bullish on Australian shares as they broke out to new highs. Last week, we had the dip. The dip's over. Now we're going to start to move higher. So keep an eye on these Aussie shares. Bonds crapped out. This is what we're saying. They, they sold bonds, bought stocks. Purple predictor turned very, very negative. Now, this is, I have to say, a bit of a surprise. I was getting more and more bullish on the bonds. Let me show you why. But look at this. Bond traders, the smart money in the bond market, they bailed out when it got up to those highs. It's like, hey, yeah, they should be higher. Interest rates should be lower, but not this high and interest rates shouldn't be this low. So if we look at the key indicators that are affecting the bond market, bond yields are up at the top in green. The most important indicator is the competition from Germany. That's the blue line. And you can see we got a little teeny bit of a hook up in interest rates in Germany. But our other two factors, which are longer term, are gold and commodity prices. They continue to move lower, suggesting lower bond yields in the future. So still can't get away from this bullish story longer term. The dollar, uh, if interest rates go up, usually the dollar goes up, but it did make new highs. But on Friday, kind of crapped out. I really don't want to trade it. It's boring. It's got to, as soon as it breaks out of the purple line, then I'll trade it. A gold, new lows on the move. I, I've been highlighting this market. I talked a lot about it last week. I won't repeat it now. But here's the thing. Are you ready for this? Let me completely reverse everything I said. Here's why. We're going to have a nice rally in gold this week. How do I know? Well, it's already started. How do I know? Because look at the green line on the chart. Look at the green line. That's the RSI, and that measures the momentum of the marketplace. Back at the beginning of July, the RSI made a low. The price then made a new low, but the RSI did not in the last week. So the momentum ran out of gas on the downside. And that tells me we're going to get a nice rally. Could only be 10, 20 bucks, but at least we're going to have a rally this week. You can count on it. Okay, our indicators also look at all three of them hooked up. Now, normally I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, this is the beginning of a new big new bull market. I'm not a gold bug like those guys who, who like are perma bulls on gold. And as you can see, they've been hammered uh, for the last four months. No, 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 no. I'm going to steer you in the right direction. I'm going to tell you when to get long gold. I'm a big believer in gold, but I'm also a trader. I'm not a fool. I don't like losing money in gold. So our indicators just hooked up. Not enough to say, hey, this is a new bull market, but enough at least to get us some type of a little bit of a, um, uh, you know, of, of a uh, retracement to the upside. So that's going to definitely happen this week. At least 20 bucks, you know, something like that, I would say. Um, so we should be in pretty good shape here. All right. Uh, oil crapped out just like I said it would. I think we're now about as far down as we're going to go short term. There's a big fight going on. We got Libya back into the market, Iran out of the market, sort of. Uh, the Saudis are now kind of backtracking on their commitment to increase oil. Uh, Russia, they just basically lie all the time, so who cares? Anyway, so I think we're going to kind of settle in here in a highly volatile market, very nervous market, trying to figure out exactly what's going on. So, all right, Bitcoin got a nice little rally here. You can see the purple predictor actually started to move higher. That was one of the reasons why I was quite bearish. Obviously, we broke to uh, new lows uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but this little rally... Uh, you know, maybe maybe it can carry on a little bit further. Maybe we can get up to maybe 9,000, something like that. But generally speaking, it's too early to tell. This is just a retracement in a bear market at this point. We're not making higher highs or higher lows yet. So we have to count it as just a retracement at this point. Uh, Bitcoin, yeah, 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 we went over that. All right, upcoming events. Uh, of course, you should all be coming to our events here at Wealth Builder. 
And there they are. Just let us know if you want to come. Uh, Stock Butler is where we get our trade recommendations. So this is a great piece of software. Highly, highly recommended. All right, that's it for me, all you freebies. Love having you around. Fully paid up members, just hang in there for a second and we'll rock and roll.